Hi, this is Antonia Dodge. And I'm Joel Mark Witt for Personality Hacker Podcast. Uh, this week we're talking about the drama track. Let me give you some background about what kind of sparked this conversation. I We're down in Florida still. Uh, you probably heard last podcast we're down here. I'm visiting some family. I'm actually at my grandmother's house who's... She's 91, going to be 92 this year. So we're spending some time with her and working remotely from beautiful Florida, even though it's a little cool sometimes. Uh, last week, she invited me to come to her church with her. Um, and obviously, I grew up in kind of a, a very religious household. So it's not out of the frame of me to end up going with my grandmother when I'm visiting. Um, and I went to church. I haven't been to church in a long time since I've had some paradigm shifts and some different personal development stuff. And I was sitting in church this week. Uh, listening to the message with my grandmother. It was just me and her sitting there, obviously the crowd of other people. And I was listening to the speaker talk and I really noticed um, a lot of victim, villain, hero language in the message that was coming in the church this week. What, what does that mean? And, and we're going to talk about that in a minute, but basically um, there was this notion that, and I want, I'm actually going to turn it over to you in a second, Tony, to talk about... Um, the drama tri- triangle itself. And I just kind of give a, a context of why this came up in conversation. So I'm listening to the message and there's this, this picture being painted that um, there's an evil force, there's the devil, there's evilness in the world, there's uh, destruction and sin. And this is a very villainous concept that's painted. And then there's this idea that us as humans are victims of this evil force in the world, this evil misleading in the world. And there's a hero who is God that can save you from all of this trouble in your life. And this was really pervasive in the music, in the conversation, in the message, everything. Um, and it, you know, I've, I've heard it all before because I grew up in this culture, but it was really interesting to see, um, having been out of it for a little while, how um, embedded this concept of having a hero, God, a, a villain, the devil or sin or evilness, and a victim, us as humans, as sheep, as people, um, is embedded into that kind of religious thought. And then you and I were talking tonight about how um, there's so much um, of this in our media and other things. But basically, it comes from a model that that we've used and we've dug into a little bit called the drama triangle. Maybe you want to go ahead and describe that because you're really good at describing models and, <laughs> and maps. And, uh, and then we can unpack that a little bit for the podcast. What do you think? Well, sure. <laughs> Sound good? By the way, we did not plan this at all. Yeah. Uh, I think it's pretty clear that we don't plan our podcasts. Uh, so the the drama triangle is uh, part, it was, it was something that was written for transactional analysis, which indicates a mindset. It's like a way of seeing reality or seeing the world in which... Everybody has to fall into what is called the drama triangle, which is that there is a villain or a persecutor, uh, there is a victim, and then there's a hero. Now, in the drama triangle, I think they call them something a little different than victim, villain, hero. I- I've always used those phrases or those terminologies because I thought that they were the easiest to remember. But fundamentally, it's exactly how it sounds. It's that one person is on the receiving end of villainy from another person, and a third person needs to swoop in and save them from this villainy. And what's really interesting is that one would think that we would always put ourselves when we have this mindset in either the victim or the hero role, depending upon, you know, what what we like to see ourselves as or how we were raised. However, in the drama triangle, it seems that we all take all three positions when we're seeing the world this way. We'll sometimes be the villain, and that's when we feel a lot of shame and regret. We'll be the victim when we don't believe that we can do anything about our situation. And we'll be the hero when we think that we have been the catalyst for somebody else's you know, massive transformation or their ability to get through something. And it feels like a innocent enough way of seeing the world. However, it, it's actually got its own, um, it's got its own traps built into it. I think the most obvious trap is, first of all, if you're the victim, well, helpless. you're helpless. You can't do anything until somebody swoops in and saves you. And if you're the villain, well, it all it, it, being the villain or seeing the world in terms of villainy, 
is a pretty black and white way of you know seeing seeing another human being or even a situation i think it takes out of consideration lots of elements where nobody sees themselves as the villain for the most part sometimes we do but the person who you see as the villain is probably not seeing themselves as the villain in this situation <laughs> and so why aren't they seeing themselves as the villain? Is it because they're totally blinded by their villainy or is it because no human being is quite that simple? Yeah. And then the biggest problem with a hero is that uh, heroes are pretty egotistical. They like to think of themselves as oh so awesome and they don't really allow the quote unquote victim an opportunity to solve their challenges on their own. So there's a lot of built in problems with the drama triangle. And if you are in a situation where you're like maybe say dealing with your mate or somebody close to you and you have a tendency to overlay this model, superimpose this model over reality, then in any given interaction, which position are you taking and which position are they taking? So in a fight, are they always the villain? Are you expecting them to be the hero that swoops in and they're not? That's the other piece of it is that uh, when a person, when we've dubbed them part of this triangle, and they're not meeting our expectations, Yeah. then suddenly they become the villain. In particular, if we're a victim and we're looking for a hero. If the person doesn't come in as a hero, well, now they're the villain. <laughs> and, and if we were the victim, and uh, in our victimhood, because we couldn't change anything, we bite back, right, because hurting people hurt others, suddenly now we're the villain. So it's just an, it's, it's a massive oversimplification of reality and not a particularly useful model. It's one of the models that almost everybody adopts in Western culture, and it's probably one of the most damaging. Yeah, I could see that. I've You were saying that nobody ever refers themselves as a villain. I've been in relationships before where uh, the other person on the other side called me a villain so much that I actually started believing that about myself, that I must be villainous, there's something wrong with me, I've got to fix myself, I'm so horrible of a person. And then it actually flipped me into being a victim. Like, I'm so victimized, I I don't know, I can't help myself, I'm so villainous, I'm hurting other, you know, this person's told me I'm hurting them so much, uh, I'm, the, I'm the cause of all of their pain, and oh, poor me, because I now I'm stuck in this position. So I kind of like oscillated between the two in, a, in previous relationships. Um, so I could see maybe people referring, like thinking of themselves as a villain if someone projects that onto them all the time. Right. Well, when I said that, I was a misnomer because I had just immediately before that said that people see themselves as a villain sometimes. And that's the moments when they feel guilt and shame. So oh, yeah, people well, do yeah, see yeah. themselves as a villain. It's just not as frequent as they see themselves as a victim or a hero. So Absolutely. I would agree with you. Yeah. we And we can get locked in a villain role in our minds <clears> or in, <throat> in other people's minds and we buy it. Yeah. And that's I think that's what I was saying is it's yeah. projected onto you sometimes. Um, so, uh, we see this in obviously maybe religious contexts. We see this in family dynamics. We see uh, it in movies and in m- stories. I was say movies in particular. Yeah. Like all of our narratives, all of our stories, right? Our stories are powerful. The stories that we tell each other, our tales, our mythos, our mythology, this is sort of our shared consciousness and it's everywhere in shared consciousness. I was just thinking about something. We watched the movie uh, with our little baby recently, Frozen. Mm -hmm. This just came to my mind. Um, I don't, I didn't see a very strong drama triangle in that movie. There was, um, and I'm noticing this in newer animated movies, Mm -hmm. particularly by Disney and Pixar. There are storylines that I I think I perceive to be weak storylines because they don't have a strong sense of a bad guy character. Mm You know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. They don't have that strong villain. You know, back in the the old, you know, animated movies, you had this like Maleficent. Literally dragons <laughs> that would like come out of the ground and like they were like the evil stepmother or like these evil characters. And some of the modern um films, you don't actually see some drama tri- triangle going on, which I think is also interesting. Our culture seems to not be embracing this as much going forward. Yeah. In media, it still is, obviously, it's everywhere, but also you're seeing some emergence of these non-storylines or uh, non-drama triangle storylines. Or more complex characterization, Uh, like in Tangled, yeah, the the stepmom was supposed to be, or the adopted mom was supposed to definitely not adopted. Excuse me, the the mom, the per, the woman who stole her, yeah. right? <laughs> she was stolen. If I'm not mistaken. Spoiler alert. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, well, I mean, in the first ten minutes, you find that out. But the uh, the woman who stole her was nurturing. 
And so you've got the you've got a more fleshed out um, bad guy. In fact, now that I mentioned Maleficent, if I'm not mistaken, there's a movie coming out to give the the background of that character of Maleficent. Yeah, I think we're more and more seeing bl- things not in terms of black and white, but more in terms of gray. One of the movies that you and I loved recently was the movie Her with Joaquin Phoenix and uh, Amy Adams and um, yeah. Uh, Scarlett Johansson and that didn't have a victim or a hero or a villain at all like there was no drama triangle in that at all and it was a beautiful movie it was very well executed and very well done and I think that we're probably in a postmodern and third modernity age moving away from this drama triangle in our media as much that said this is new, new, new stuff. Yeah. We've been embroiled media-wise in the drama triangle for literally thousands of years. You go back, I mean, that's, it gets real, real clear when you start looking at, like, Greek mythology and early stories that were passed, you know, back and forth. Or, and I never watched this, but the reality television I have seen <laughs> <laughs> tends to capitalize on this to the nth degree. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, people put themselves in those positions on purpose yeah. in order to play up the drama. And that's and the amplify thing. amplify it. That, that's the reason why it's called the drama triangle is because the more you embroil yourself in this, tra- uh, this triangle, the more drama you get. And it's not a super, again, it's not a super helpful way of looking at the world. The world doesn't really need to be saved on a macro level. Let's, let's talk about it on a macro level. Nobody really needs to be saved, right? And, and nobody's really the hero coming in to save them. And nobody's the villain that's making this all happen. That said, there are dynamics that are similar enough to it to make it feel like there's truth there. And one of the best antidotes to the drama triangle is a another model called the empowerment dynamic. Uh, there was a gentleman who came up with the empowerment dynamic not that long ago. I think it's been within the last 15 years. 2005. 2005. Okay, okay so 2005 is like... Not even, I mean, that's like nine years ago. <laughs> so uh, so it's been within the last 10 years. And the dude's name, I know his middle name is Diamond or like... No, uh, it's David Emerald. Emerald. Thank you. Womeldorf or whatever, something yeah. like that. <laughs> Womeldorf, that's right. <laughs> uh, David Emerald Womeldorf, that's right. Thank you for He's also out. in the Harry Potter movies, just so you know. Yeah, that's right. Uh, <laughs> very well Does researched. it sound like a... Quick, open up Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> Does it sound like a... Like a Harry Potter characters. Oh, yeah, yeah, his name. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But we did have a, a moment of, quick, open up Wikipedia. What's that dude's name? Uh, I recommend checking it out, though. We'll open up Wikipedia and check out the empowerment dynamic because um, it's if you find yourself thinking in these terms of victim, villain, hero, one of the best ways to not completely like throw it out and therefore leave a vacuum. However, change it just a little bit, reframe it just a little bit, that's way more helpful, is to remove the word villain and put in challenger, remove the word victim and put in creator, and remove the word hero and instead place coach. So I have an interesting question kind of to us and our audience. Why do you think that we need a model at all. I mean, why do we, why don't we just throw it all out and say, we're not going to adopt this model? Why do we say, let's switch it and, and, you know, think about an empowerment dynamic? Is it because it's so ingrained in us as humans? Or is it just because it's easier because most people are adopting this so we can get on in the world this way? Or we're just not ready to throw it all out completely and just live post all of this? Why do we switch these in your mind? I'm throwing this at you totally. Yeah. You may not have the answer. I'm just I'm speculatively <laughs> asking this in my own mind. Like, I wonder why we need to switch this to empowerment versus just getting drama. rid of it completely. Just saying, I don't want drama in my life at all. I don't want this at all. Yeah. Well, I don't know if this is going to be particularly helpful. That said, I think we work best when we have models of all kinds. Yeah. I think that's kind of the point. One of the biggest pieces of what Personality Hacker does is it teaches models of the mind and models of human development. And as a co-creator of Personality Hacker, it's a passion of mine because models, they're pegs to hang information on. They're frameworks to fit data sets. They're ways of looking at reality that make it manageable. 
Otherwise, reality is way too complex. Yeah. Like like the nature of reality, if we really understood what was going on and our brain didn't just automatically oversimplify everything so we could get through in life, we would be so waterlogged with data and information that we wouldn't be able to move. Yeah. Like we would just like it would just be a torrential downpour of what's going on. And one of the th- reasons why I think models are so helpful is that it puts it it like gives us an ability to organize that information enough to make it so that we can navigate our way through life in this particular situation yeah we are inundated with a drama triangle it's everywhere it's in our religions as we grow up it's in our media as we get entertained it's our politics right like it's the like the most credible sources are supposed to be you know our political figures and our leaders and it's in leadership what what happens when somebody comes home from work and they're bitching about their work, right? What are they doing? They're a victim. The boss is the villain, right? Yeah. And there's no hero. They've just got to deal with it and live life that way. So it's like we don't even know when we're caught up in it. And so having a model that... It's ha- kind of awareness. Yeah. Then- it's like, okay, in- instead of... Because I, I, I don't think we can just totally unplug. If we've been... I, as a person who used to be very, 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 very you know, influenced by the drama triangle without having any awareness of it. I would say that one of the easiest ways to transition out of it was to be able to, you know, keep the framework, but... Swap in more positive. Swap in more positive. As we're talking, I could totally think, you know, in my previous relationship where I was told I was the villain, 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 I'm starting to think, man, I'm a villain. And then I switch into victimhood. Mm -hmm. uh, And I'm like, oh, woe is me. I can't do anything about it. Had I been able to identify you know, kind of identify someone's labeling me as a villain and Mm -hmm. to say, you know, I'm not a villain. Maybe I'm challenging this person in a way they don't like to see. I'm mirroring something back to them. I'm being a challenge to them in their life. They don't like that. Right. And instead of woe is me, it's more like, you know, I can create a new reality in this situation. I can now become a creator. Right. And create something new instead of just taking life as a as it comes at me and feeling very helpless. Mm -hmm. So I could see that being able to identify, because other people are going to probably put you in these boxes without you wanting to be like, oh, you're my hero. No, I'm I'm here to coach and kind of guide you along, but I'm not going to come save you. I'm not taking that power from you. Right. I'll come and help coach you through this, but don't make me your hero. This is not my gig here. That's one of the reasons why I think the empowerment triangle is so or the empowerment dynamic rather is so wonderful is that you might not see yourself as a person who's in the drama triangle. Like that might not be for some reason, for whatever reason you have managed to escape it. Uh, you know, in our, in the Western culture, you have managed to escape this way of looking at reality. Most people around you have not. Yeah. So you might find yourself caught up in it because somebody else is in there. Like that's their reality. That's what they're swimming in. And so all of a sudden now you're getting all splashed right with it. And so to be able to reframe and go, you, you know, in your relationship, the one that you're referring to, it's it was my observation that you became the villain because you weren't the hero they wanted you to be. Yeah. So they first assigned you as hero. And then when you lost your shiny sainthood hero status, now you were a villain. And then I put myself into victimhood based on that. So I'm stuck in this like, cycle of blah exactly well so now let's let's swap out these titles for the empowerment dynamic which is once again the villain is the challenger the victim is the creator and the um hero is the coach well like you said you know i'm not here to be your hero it i'm not even here to be your coach i can be a coach right like i'm not here to be your coach however if that makes sense for us, right? Like if we're in a situation where I've got something to offer you, I absolutely will do so. Like I'm totally willing to help you in your situation if you need a coach or I'm not, <laughs> right? Like, or I'm not in a place in my life which where I can coach somebody like you or I'm not in a place in my life where I can coach anybody right now. But you're certainly not here to save me or, or save somebody in that Yeah, situation. it's like, and so what's great about the coach role is that as opposed to a hero, which is needed, right? Like if the hero doesn't show up, like they, I mean, we've seen super Snow rulers. White dies. <laughs> yeah, right? Like all hell breaks loose, right? Yeah. If the hero doesn't show up, the hero is the villain, right? Because they didn't show up. The coach, however, has the ability to create boundaries and has the ability to say no, right? If they're not the right coach for the for the time period. So the coach has a lot more uh, say in the matter. And, and I think that that's what 
kind of happens in all of the positions in the empowerment dynamic, which is why they're empowered, right? The coach has the ability to be empowered to not have to swoop in. Well, the coach doesn't take on, he doesn't adopt the power of the person that needs help or she needs help. They, in other, they, know, they enable to coach them through their own power. In other words, you've got the power, you've got the power to be a creator and change your own destiny, change your own life. I'll help coach you into that. I'm not going to come and take that power from you and save you. Let me just help you, enable you to what's already there. Right. At your fingertips. Right, which is why the creator is also empowered. Exactly what you just said yeah. is why the creator is empowered. I just, want to, I just want to reiterate, though, the coach is empowered to say no. Yeah. So it's not... It's not that the hero can't not be a hero anymore. The coach might not be the right coach for the job. And so then you find another coach. And sometimes life is the coach. And sometimes a situation or a circumstance is the coach. Sometimes we coach ourselves, right? So it's like there's a lot of power that comes along with being a coach as opposed to a hero. And like you just said, the creator is massively empowered as opposed to a victim that's just got to sit there and wait for somebody to swoop in and save them. The creator is now looking around going, I'm the creator of my destiny. If I don't like my situation, it's my job to change it. It's not my job to wait for somebody else to change it for me. It's not my job to say, oh, woe is me. It's my job to go, look, this situation that I hate and is making me feel mopey, I did this. Yeah. I am the creator of my world. I did this, so I'm empowered. Just as like I was empowered to create this, I'm empowered to create an alternative. And it's the same thing with the the villain, right? The villain is no longer a villain. It's a challenger. So that person might not have any idea that they're a challenger in your life. Like, it might not be personal at all. I've experienced that, right? Like, um, one of the things that I've really been talking about lately is... As the mother of a daughter, um, I grew up with a lot of self-esteem issues about the way that I look. And it's my job to make sure that my daughter doesn't experience the same thing that I experienced by having complete and total self-acceptance. Uh, there was a great quote that I read recently on Facebook from um, Naomi Wolf, who said that, or I'm going to paraphrase, I don't know what the exact quote was, but it was basically a woman who completely accepts herself, has, like shows complete self-acceptance, vaccinates her daughter against low self-esteem. Yeah. And so that's my job. My job is as a woman to fully accept myself in all areas, in all ways, the good, the bad, the ugly, the beautiful, and to understand that, you know, that that's there's no failing in the things that I thought were failings before, right? I am what I show up as. And I have uh, recently noticed that there was some struggle with seeing other women who I perceived as more beautiful than, than me uh, as, you know, like the, the ungenerous thoughts you have. Like, like I, I have a tendency to kind of put it back in on, on myself. Like, I'm I'm more of a shame person than I'm an anger person. So I'm like, oh, that person's beautiful, therefore I must be terrible. Yeah. However, I was talking with a girlfriend of mine about it today, and she tends more towards anger than shame. And she's like, I totally know what you're talking about. And, and we were not, I mean, we're like, we were allowing ourselves to not be at our best <laughs> place. And she's like, and you're looking at, and she's like, she's like, you look at these girls on the beach, and they're like, you know, Twizzler bitches. <laughs> It was hilarious. She was totally cracking me up. What does that even mean? Yeah, I don't know, but it was, but I, well, I knew exactly what she meant. <laughs> and so, um, I mean, we were laughing about it and it's funny, but it's like, uh, she was saying her antidote is to go up and give that woman a compliment, hmm. right? Like the way that she deals with it when she feels jealousy and anger is she goes up and she compliments the woman in some way and makes sure that before she does it, it's an authentic compliment. Yeah. Um, and that's so that's, that's one of the ways that she deals with that situation. But what's awesome is that she could see that person as a villain her choice is to see them as a challenger. Hmm. And so when she goes up and compliments them, she's not a victim, right? Like, because she's not, she's feeling like she doesn't look the way she wants to and this person does. So therefore, she's the victim of the situation and this other person is the villain. She chooses to put that on its head and she chooses to see herself as a creator who can walk up talk to the woman, right, who might be challenging her, compliment her, and now she's created a completely different relationship with this person. Yeah. Right? Like, she gets to see it in a totally different way. It humanizes them. Well, it's, like, totally, it, like, just turns it on its head. And she creates a different relationship with herself. I mean, she basically sees herself in a different light as a person who is able to go up and do that. You know, it's a right. different way of looking at yourself 
in that way. Yeah, as a third person looking down on the situation, taking a meta perspective, she's an awesome human being who won't let pettiness get in the way of of having a generous spirit. Yeah. So yeah, so she feels good about that person. She feels good about herself. She has taken the drama triangle and turned it into the empowerment dynamic. And I think, you know, looking at it on a macro level, we talked about the world, you know, so zoom out far enough and, you know, you're looking at the entire world, but then you start zooming in and it's like, you know, it's easy to see countries as being this way. Like there are certain countries that just, you know, my heart bleeds for the people in them because... They've got such a tough time of it. Are they victims, right? And then there's it's easy to see other countries as you know being threatening and posturing and like you know villainous. Yeah, like gathering all these arms and you know like like being these awful villains. Well, are they really villains, right? Like are these other countries victims? And then it's easy to see other countries, especially the country you come from, if you're particularly patriotic, as the hero that comes in and saves these other countries from themselves. So in politics, it's super easy to see this in, in global politics. Then you start zooming in further and further, and you know, you've know you got entire institutions against each other. Yeah. You've got, you've got patriotism, you've got religiosity, you've got you know, you've got businesses pitting each other, you know, against each other. And you've got corporate espionage and you've got all this stuff. And it's really easy to get into the drama triangle there, too. And then you go even further in. And now we're talking about, you know, like groups of people or tribes. And you go further in and you're talking about families and you go further in and you're talking about your relationship with your spouse or your mate or whatever. And it's like at every level, the drama triangle only produces one thing. And that is drama. Yeah, and it seems like it's really pervasive without us being very aware aware of it. Um, as I, as you're talking and I'm thinking through this and I'm I'm looking back on my life and my current relationships, uh, it is it is very pervasive. And the, I think the danger is it, it's obviously not being aware that this is something that you're partaking in. But the other concern is that people will, like we've talked about this whole time, project things onto you that you don't. Like they hand power over to you as a villain, a hero, yeah. a victim, or they, they put you in a victim role and, and you don't want to be in this spot. Um, right. And you're playing a hot potato with their yeah, power. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's, but it's so easy just to accept what role you're given, what people just assign to you or what mm. you maybe even assign to yourself without really consciously thinking through. Yeah. What am I doing? Yeah. So kind of a exercise to the listeners, and this is something I've done is just go through maybe like some, like a really easy exercise, take five of your closest relationships, the people you spend the most time with, the five people, probably your spouse, girlfriend, boyfriend, lover, whatever, um, and family members, friends, whoever you spend a lot of time with, and take each person's name right on a piece of paper and kind of figure out, are you in a drama triangle with any of these people? Um, and it might even be some coworkers, people that you don't even like that much, but you spend a lot of time around them. Are you either willingly entering into a drama triangle by putting yourself there, or are these people putting you into that drama triangle? And then kind of see some mm-hmm. patterns emerge. Like you, your spouse, you might always be the the victim with or the villain or mm-hmm. the hero. The or hero, yeah. You, and you might put yourself there. Your spouse might put yourself there. Or it just happened that way organically. The world, you know, other people might have put the two of you in these two different roles. And you right. didn't intend it at all. Yeah. Um, it's just a really, I think it's a really good exercise to go through and see where your relationships are outlined here. And then, then start to think about. Yeah. How can you empower those relationships? How can you turn that on the head and yeah. change the hero into a coach? What's change that's the victim great. into a creator? Yeah, absolutely. That's a fantastic exercise for awareness because then you find if, if you discover that there's any patterns. Yeah. Like, do I have a tendency to be hero? Do I have a tendency to be a victim? Do I have a de- tendency to be a villain? Um, my guess is that people have a tendency for one of them yeah. in general. Totally. There's probably a tendency to put yourself in one, and there's a tendency for other people to put you into one. Absolutely. Well, and not only that, and by the way, all you hero people, if you end up f- finding yourself in the position of hero, uh, that's not a good thing. <laughs> like, that was me. I was the person who was always, like, wanting to be the hero. Ever since I was a little kid, I always wanted to be the hero. And one of the biggest problems with the hero is the hero, the hero isn't thrown the power of the victim necessarily the hero comes in and swoops in and takes it yeah so you're not actually saving anybody you're taking their power yeah and they might willingly let you do that but you're still the person who came in and took it so if you see yourself in a hero role that's not necessarily any better than victim or villain (laughs) so just as a note however that said as an extension of that exercise if you want to ask yourself 
if I am the hero, how can I be more of a of a coach? Like, if I'm the person who's the hero, how can I help coach the person? And by coach, we mean assist them with their situation and then step back and let them do the work. If, if you're invited to. <laughs> if, right, or if it makes sense. Or if it's a situation that, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's Because otherwise whole, you're still kind of being a hero if you exactly, try to force that. Exactly, exactly. There's a whole thing of like, you know, when the, te- when the student is ready, the teacher will come. Yeah. Well, make sure that you're not a teacher who's like swooping in when the student isn't ready. Right. Yeah. So be a, how can you be a creator if it makes sense? Oh, excuse me. A coach. A coach if it makes sense. And how can you let yourself be empowered to go, maybe this isn't the right time to be a coach. Yeah. Right. Maybe I can step back in this situation. And the same thing with, you know, victim and creator. Like if you see yourself truly victimized. And, and I've heard some sob stories that feel pretty damn victimy. Yeah. Right. Like. Woe is me. Like, oh, my, well. <laughs> like a like a serious legitimate oh my gosh that is a terrible story yeah you know like like things got pretty bad there and now in this moment are you a victim or are you a creator like it it's not really a retroactive victimhood it's not really going back and going uh you know like oh I guess I wasn't a victim when I was say molested as a child right like that's not really what we're talking about here we're not saying that every child who was molested created the circumstances to be molested of course not. However, as an adult, are you a person who can create your reality now? And can you see yourself as empowered to do that? Yeah. So if you see yourself as a victim, how can you see yourself as a creator? Just start to entertain the idea and mess with it. And of course, the same thing with villain and challenger. If you see yourself as the villain, maybe you're just what that person needed at that time. I mean, take, for example, like the, the situation we keep hearkening back to, which is your relationship with an ex of yours. I'm sure it doesn't feel like it, but was that person just what you needed at the time? Yeah. And maybe the answer is no, (laughs) right? However, you stayed there, so they were what you needed at the time, right? To some degree. Right. Like, I mean, it feels like as a person, it feels really bad to go, I really didn't need that person's toxic, you know, influence in my life. However, if you stayed, then they were teaching you something. In the majority of cases, and I've learned this in my life, I think us humans do the best we can with the information we have at the time. We make the best decisions we can at the time. And it's so easy to retroactively go, well, I should have made different decisions to get really you know, frustrated or... Um, resentful. Resentful. But I think that we tend to make... We make decisions based on what we're working with. And sometimes those aren't the best decisions, maybe in the moment, looking backward. But at the time... Uh, those can those can just be what what happened. Yeah. And uh, and I, I like what you said about this isn't about trying to fix the past. Now, if you are someone obviously that's been molested, or you've got massive trauma, you might need professional help to get past that. We're not yeah. saying that there's no healing work that has to happen there. Yeah. It's not like it's well, be a creator, it's all going to be you know fine. No, there's still probably some healing has to happen. Well, creators he- can go through that healing process. Correct, but there might be some professional help people need. Absolutely. I, and and um, I think it's it's a really key point, though, that this is something going forward. This is something to say, I'm going to get up this morning and I'm going to be a creator of my world and my life in whatever way I have power over. Yeah. Because sometimes you do have limitations. You might have physical, emotional, psychological limitations right now that you're still working through. Mm-hmm. But in the ways you can make a creative difference in your life. Take that power and and start those little steps toward being a creator. And it's going to become easier and easier as you go down that road because you're going to get in the habit of doing it in the little things. And then the big things will come later. Absolutely. Well, and creators seek coaches. Yes. And that's not bad. Like a creator knows that they have to do the work and they find a coach to help guide them to do the work. Yeah. And a creator doesn't mean magic wand you change immediately. Creator means that over time you're the person who ultimately carves your path. So it's good I think I'm I'm grateful actually that you mentioned those nuances because I think that those are definitely, you know, if you're first entertaining this model, it's pretty easy to dismiss it because it's going to feel weird to not think of yourself in those roles. It's going to feel weird to think of yourself, you know, if you've, if you've had a habit of thinking of yourself as a victim, it feels weird to not. Yeah. Like, we're talking about 
Well, secondary massive, payoff, too. That's, oh, yeah. <laughs> massive secondary payoff. And we're talking about major wiring in your brain that is like, I mean, that synaptic pathway, that, that neural superhighway has been very well preserved. <laughs> and it's like, it's all protected by your brain. And so the idea of going, well, I'm not a victim, I'm a creator, that might be jarring for your brain initially. You might have already turned off the podcast. Yeah, <laughs> well, exactly. And we're talking to nobody. But that said, um, if you've made it this far, recognize that this is not... Not necessarily an easy transition. However, it's probably the easiest one you're going to find yeah. in order to get to a point of creating and manifesting the, the life that you want. So in wrapping up, come over and leave a comment on the Personality Hacker website. It's personalityhacker.com. You can also enter the discussion on our Facebook page, which is facebook.com forward slash personality hacker. And we're also on Twitter, which mm-hmm. is twitter.com forward slash personality hack. H-A-C-K. We couldn't get the er in there. So it's personality <laughs> hack. And uh, let us know. Are you, what do you think about the drama triangle, the empowerment dynamic? Where are you at on this? Are you seeing this come up in your relationships? Have you figured out ways to transcend it? Have you already worked with the, uh, the empowerment dynamic and you've seen some results? Yeah. Um, has anything sh- shaken loose for you today and you're yeah. going to make some changes? Let us know. We'd love to hear from you. Yeah, let's get a little crowdsourcing going. And uh, and let us know what you want to hear more on these podcasts. We always like to talk about ma- maps and models and models of human development. So uh, whatever you're interested, whatever struggles you're going through in life or any exciting things you found or learned, we'd love to hear about and we'd talk about those in the future. So I am Joel Mark Witt. And I'm Antonia Dodge. And this is the Personality Hacker Podcast. We'll talk to you next time. Mm-hmm.